How's it going, everybody? Right on. Folks, I am very happy to be here, and, and I mean that sincerely, because when I'm here, I'm not at home. I live on top of a laundromat with two other guys, and that's not a brag, just the truth. I don't want people to think I'm showing off up here. We just lucked out and got that sweet spot on top of the laundromat. And I know, I know what you're all thinking, and the answer to your question is no. My apartment does not smell like clean laundry. <laughs> Which was the dream, you know. That's the dream. When you move on top of a laundromat, you think at least it's gonna be downy fresh every day. Just the sweet smell of artificial springtime coming up through the floor. No, my apartment smells like dog and pot. Um, <laughs> when you have roommates, you argue. That's an unavoidable truth, and the uh, number one cause of arguments in my apartment is cleanliness. Uh, you might not know this about me, but I like to keep a clean apartment. I'm 36, I'm getting older, I like my shit to look nice. Uh, my roommate Ryan and I argue about cleanliness all the time because Ryan is a disgusting pig man. The other day, we got into a very big argument. Ryan got very mad at me for what he called unnecessarily moving his shit. Uh, or what I called tidying the living room. It's this crazy thing I do every now and again where I go around the living room and take things that aren't supposed to be there and then I put them in their proper place. You know, like a real cocksucker would. And he had left a backpack and a shirt in the middle of the living room floor. Now, uh, I'll be honest, I'm no Martha Stewart up here. Uh, but I am fairly certain that those don't fucking go there! So all I did I picked up the bag and the shirt and I put them in his room. Just opened the door and put them down. His things in his space. I didn't take his belongings and fire them down a well while laughing evilly to myself as that would have been unnecessary. No, I quite courteously put his belongings in his bedroom but the next day Ryan came home from work furious with me because apparently Ryan had been late for work because he couldn't find his backpack. <laughs> and he thought that was my fault. Now, I admit it, I moved the backpack from the living room to his room that he was in. <laughs> he was in his room when I put his bag in there, which means he had to step over that bag. He had to step over the thing he couldn't find to go not find it in another room. I just don't think he understands how searching works. If you're searching for something and it's not in the first place you look, you look somewhere else, anywhere else. You try again. You don't just stand in the living room smoking bongs hoping the backpack finds you. Because that's not searching, that's waiting. That's the opposite of searching. And by the way, yes, for this story, we are just going to ignore the fact that my roommate's a 37-year-old man who thinks he needs a backpack to go to work. Just toss that one right out the window. But this was my favorite part. This was his excuse as to why I was wrong and he was right. And he said, well, it doesn't matter. I can leave my things in the living room if I want to because Buster leaves his things in the living room. And if Buster leaves his things in the living room, I'm allowed to leave my things in the living room. Now, Buster is not the name of my other roommate. Buster is my other roommate's dog. So now I'm worried. I'm worried that Ryan thinks he's a dog. Actually, I kind of hope Ryan thinks he's a dog, because otherwise, he's just 
stupid. Because thinking you're a dog or being stupid are the only reasons I can come up with as to why you would take cues for what is appropriate roommate behavior from the dog. You don't do that. Like, yeah, the dog is allowed to leave his things in the living room. He's a dog. He doesn't have his own room for me to put those things in. And he only owns two things. He's got most of a bone and what's left of a chew toy, and that's it. You don't like looking at them, you do what I do. You kick them under the coffee table. I want you to realize how borderline insane that is, thinking you're allowed to do stuff because a dog does it. The dog shits outside. That's where we take the dog to shit. Ryan, not allowed to shit outside. I don't care if the dog does it. The neighbors complained and the police were very clear about this. Ryan's not allowed to shit outside anymore. The dog's allowed to lick his balls in front of company. Not my favorite thing the dog does, but he can do it. Number one, that's how he cleans himself. And we want him to have a nice clean crotch because that makes him feel more confident. <laughs> Number two, the dog can reach. It's just sad watching Ryan try. <laughs> He's never made it. Not a once, not even close. Like he kind of got his belly button damp one time, but that was from spitting and we all knew that. You're not bendy enough to lick your belly button. Don't make up fibs. You want to try that nonsense in your bedroom? You do it with the door closed. No one wants to see it. It's gross and my mom's visiting. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me.